Is the science settled about cholesterol, statins, and dementia? If it is, which way? This is a prime example of a topic where experts have claimed with equal conviction that lowering cholesterol with statins definitively lowers the risk of dementia, and others that the same intervention increases the risk of dementia. And now it gets even more confusing with headlines and even a lipid expert proclaiming that a new study shows definitively that statins lower dementia risk. Only here's the catch. The study in question didn't show that at all. Confused? Yeah, me too. So let's see if we can clear this up. Now, I know this is a little off topic for us here at Metabolic Mind, but I find it instructive to demonstrate how the science is rarely ever settled. And perhaps more importantly, how we kind of always need to be aware when the headlines distort the real science. So let's set the stage. Mainstream medicine says the data are clear. Statins or lowering cholesterol in general do not increase the risk of dementia. And in fact, they point out that lipid lowering reduces the risk for dementia. And there are plenty of studies to support all of these claims. Many have proclaimed the science is settled and the point is not debatable. And then there is the opposing view that statins increase the risk of dementia and having higher cholesterol is protective of dementia. And there are studies to back up these claims as well. I'll get to why there can be conflicting data and how we, we want to approach it a little bit later. But first, let's look at the recent study that headlines now proclaim prove statins lower dementia risk. And I'll cut to the conclusion. The study has nothing to do with statins or any lipid lowering drug. There were no drugs given and no use of drugs even measured. In fact, at the end of the paper, the authors explicitly say it is important to acknowledge that this study investigates the effect of genetic targets and not the effect of prescribed medications on dementia risk. But that didn't stop people from using their confirmation bias to proclaim overstated conclusions. Rather, in this study, what they did do was they retrospectively looked at over a million people from these large databases. So right away, we know there was no intervention. It was just observational. But they selected those with specific genetic variations in areas that are drug targets. For instance, some had mutations in HMGCR, the same area where statins work, inhibiting HMG-CoA reductase. Others were NPC1L1, where same area where Zetia works, or PCSK9, obviously where PCSK9 inhibitors work, and even some less common ones such as CETP, lipoprotein lipase, and ANGPTL4. But the point is that drugs exist to target these same areas where the mutations are. But having a mutation at that site is not the same as giving a drug. And that's where these conclusions completely break down. It's a pretty big leap to assume that a genetic mutation works exactly the same as the drug. The drugs simply aren't that clean. But let's talk about the results of the study. So this graph you see here demonstrates that for every one millimole per liter reduction in LDL, how it impacts the onset of dementia. And the first thing you should notice is that there are multiple forms of dementia. It's not just one, right? And this is something that often gets lost in the discussion. Dementia is a symptom that can result from different causes, with the main two being vascular dementia and Alzheimer's disease. And what you see here is that vascular and unspecified dementia tended to show the most benefit from some, but not all, of the mutations. And Alzheimer's disease showed little to no benefit or possibly even a worsening with the PCSK9 mutation. And interestingly, this isn't a standalone finding about PCSK9, as there's another Mendelian randomization study looking at genetic mutations, which found similar results with a PCSK9 mutation being associated with an increased risk of Alzheimer's disease. And this is a great example of, of why we may have different data on dementia, depending on the study you look at. Dementia isn't one thing. So for high-risk individuals with pre-existing vascular disease, most studies agree that statins and other lipid-lowering medications have a net benefit for reducing vascular complications for those at high risk, right? So it's not a leap to think that vascular dementia would be one of those complications. But that's not the same as Alzheimer's disease. So the population enrolled in a given study could make a big difference. But the other reason is confirmation bias in science and media coverage. I didn't even know about the study clearly showing an increased Alzheimer's risk with PCSK9 mutation until Nick Norowitz shared it with me in an interview. As far as I know, it really got no media attention, right? And why is that? Likely because it goes against the common dogma and against confirmation bias. Now, 
<laughs> at this point, you may be getting a little frustrated because I'm not going to say definitively whether or not cholesterol lowering increases or decreases dementia risk because we can't say it with certainty. But I will say that once again, we have a topic where the science is most definitely not settled and that a more nuanced look at the data suggests we need a deeper understanding of the details. We need to know how was cholesterol lowered? What was the exact mechanism? Was it a drug, a gene mutation, or a lifestyle? And what form of dementia are we talking about? And of course, when you're talking about individual, what other risk factors for dementia are present? Most notably, what is someone's metabolic health status? Because if you ask me what is the biggest impact we can have on reducing dementia risk, I'll default to metabolic health just about every time. And this discussion really could have serious implications as many now in medicine advise lowering cholesterol in most people, even those without vascular disease or those at overall low risk for vascular disease. Will the benefits outweigh the risks in that population? Well, for that, we need a better discussion about cholesterol, dementia, and the impact of other interventions like improving metabolic health. And we have to once again call on experts and media outlets to be more accurate in their discussions of studies so as not to mislead people into thinking this recent study was actually a statin trial, which of course it was not. All right, so hopefully that wasn't too frustrating or confusing but gave a different perspective on how to approach this. I thank you for watching. If it was helpful, please like and subscribe and leave a comment with your thoughts. I'm Dr. Brett Scherr, and we will see you here next time at Metabolic Mind, a nonprofit initiative of Bazooki Group. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more, check out these recommended videos. Also, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with our content and help us expand the movement. And if you want to sign up for our newsletter, access our resources, read the latest research, or check out the Think Smart framework, click here to visit our website. See you on the next video.